In this video, we're going to go ahead and cover King's Row, which is a really good integration property that tells us that this integral here on the left hand side is equal to this definite integral. Now we're going to go ahead and do that with a nice example that's typically introduced whenever we do start covering King's Row. I actually like this rule so much that I put it in my book of integrals where I cover it here. And here is the proof for those people that want to see it. You can go ahead and pause the video. And just so you know, I do have a book of integrals which covers a little over 400 integrals for you to practice. And it covers all types of integration techniques. I wrote this book about a year ago and so far it has sold close to 4,000 copies. So. I think it's becoming a little popular and I'm thinking that it's pretty helpful, at least from uh, the feedback that I got from people. So I'll link that in my dis uh, the description below. You can have it as a digital version. There's a physical copy that you can get uh, depending on where you live. Um, so yeah, check it out. So again, in this case, we're gonna assume that we already know the proof for this. So we're just gonna take it as a truth. The way we're gonna go ahead about it is whenever you have this uh, integral here, a definite integral, all you have to do is equate this to this integral here, which is basically the same thing. If you notice, your inputs now become a plus b minus x. So that's exactly what we're gonna do on this side. So let me just write it out and then I'll kind of move things around or erase things if I need to. So let's go ahead and start off. We're gonna say that this integral, i, is still equivalent to the integral from zero to pi over two, but now we're gonna have cosine to the of to the power of four o of zero plus pi over two so i'm just going to leave it as pi over two minus x over sine to the power of four of pi over two minus x and then we'll continue plus cosine of four or cosine to the power of four of pi over two minus x now i'm simply writing this for you know uh, teaching purposes but a lot of people already know what this value is but let's just go ahead and cover it for both cosine and sine so if we're trying to find cosine to the power of four of pi over two minus x we're going to go ahead and use the sum and difference formula um where i'm just going to rewrite it as cosine of pi over two minus x, and this whole thing is to the power of four. Now using the sum and difference formula, this tells us that we have cosine pi over two cosine of x plus sine pi over two sine of x. And this entire thing is to the power of four. Cosine of pi over two is zero, so that goes away. Sine of pi over two is one. So this entire expression is just gonna equal to sine to the power of four times x. That's really nice. And now the same thing for sine to the power of four of pi over two minus x. Once again, just to kind of keep, uh, skip this step, I'm just gonna go ahead and first take the sum and difference rule and then take the whole thing to the power of four. And this becomes sine pi over two cosine x minus cosine pi over two sine x and this entire thing is to the power of four okay sine over two is one so this is just cosine cosine of pi over two is zero so that goes away again that's really nice because this entire expression now becomes sine to the power of four of x whoops i lied it should be cosine to the power of four okay not bad all right so let's go ahead and talk about what's going to happen with this integral here um I'll erase some things in a second. This right here, we have the integral i is still equal to the integral from zero to pi over two of, remember, cosine of pi or cosine to the power of four of that um, expression here turned into sine to the power of four. So we have sine to the power of four x over, and now this turned into a cosine, this turned into a sine. They're being added together, so I'm just gonna write it as sine and cosine. So sine to the power of four x plus cosine to the power of four x dx. Okay, so now what we have is a new expression for the integral. And typically when you have something like this, what you wanna do is you wanna add this integral i plus this integral that's i. So that's gonna give us two i is equal to the sum of this integral here and then that integral there. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. We have the original integral that we were trying to find, and now we have this new integral that's equivalent to i by King's rule. So if we add these together, we get two i, so two times the original integral, is now gonna equal to the integral from zero to pi over two. And if you notice, these two fractions have the same denominator, so I'm just gonna go ahead and combine these two. So I get cosine to the power of four x 
plus sine to the power of 4x over our denominator, which is this value right here. Sine to the power of 4x plus cosine to the power of 4x dx. Ah, and that's the, the beauty of King's rule that sometimes things like this just cancel out quite nicely. In this case, we have the same thing on the top, same thing on the bottom. So we have 2i is now equal to the integral from pi over two of just one times dx. Okay, well we can easily solve this. We have 2i equals, and this is just x, evaluated from zero to pi over two. So we can go ahead and just use fundamental theorem of calculus, plug in your pi over two, that's pi over two minus, you plug in your zero, that's just zero. So two i is equal to pi over two. And now remember i is equivalent to the integral that we're trying to solve for. So all we have to do is just divide the two to the other side and we get that i is equal to pi over four. This is the power of King's rule. And that's all there is to it. So I highly suggest that if you do have my book, there's a bunch of practice problems that involve King's rule. But if you see it somewhere in the wild, typically when you have a definite integral with a trig function, probably King's rule. Maybe not so much, but it's always worth a try. Continue practicing, and I'll see you in the next one.